Hi, everybody. So this is a video dedicated strictly to the service bulletin that came out for the RV-14 tail cone. Essentially what's happening is uh, near the bottom of one of the bulkheads where the bottom stiffeners are, uh, there has been some cracking, very small cracking. Uh, so this is uh, used to address that. Uh, I think what happened was, um, because it was kind of designed after the 10, but the 10 has more stiffeners in the back as opposed to this plane, which they reduced down to one additional stiffener past, uh, behind this uh, bulkhead. So in order to alleviate the stress that's happening, uh, the service bulletin has you uh, simply put a couple of brackets, uh, just small brackets on the outer stiffeners and attach them directly to the bulkhead and to add a couple of small doublers to the inside uh, on the stiffeners and then on the outside uh, there's kind of a diamond uh, size plate that covers uh, the center where the cracking was occurring. And I've got my friend Ted here. You might be looking at us and thinking, hey, what's with the respirators? Well, this also was happening during the middle of our uh, horrible smoke event here in San Francisco from the camp uh, fires in, here in Northern California. The air was so bad, people were just walking around with full-on respirators. It's awful as crap. So here I am. Uh, I'm uh, drilling out the 10 rivets that you need. So you're going to drill out all the rivets for the center plate, and then you're going to also drill out a couple more on the side stiffeners. So now the, the next question is, well, how exactly do you get back there? Because uh, this is, so this is definitely, I mean, you, technically it's not a two-person job. If you were pretty mm, confident that you could get like a back riveting plate under there, you could just back rivet all of this, right? You could. Um, I don't want to take that chance. I'm not that good. So I have my friend Ted help. Uh, so, th so then it becomes, okay, so how do you, exactly do you crawl back there and do it, right? I mean, you're talking about just one skin, a few stiffeners. Uh, there's not a lot of room. If you have big legs, you know, you wind up bumping the stiffeners or, or having to rest a leg on a stiffener. It's just, it's not comfortable. So I came up with a plan in my own head. I said, you know what, what I'll do is, you know, I'm, I'm, in, a, I'm in a hangar. I've got big, huge steel supports that hold this whole thing up. I could just throw a rope and a pulley over one of them. I mean, the, the tail cone only weighs about 30 pounds. And then hoist that sucker up, and then stand up on the inside of it. Which was kind of a good idea. Uh, but then my friend Ted showed me the error of my ways. He said, you know, if you're standing up in the middle of that thing, and it's just free hanging, you're going to get disoriented. You're not going to know which way <laughs> you're standing, and you could just fall over. Damage the tail cone, and yourself. So... While he agreed that having it upright is a good idea, just hanging it from the ceiling probably isn't. So, what we've got here is, uh, Ted had a good idea to, said, well, why don't we just rest the edge of the tail cone onto the work table? So that's what we're going to do. We're going to rest it on that, so we can put some green padding out that you see, and that's, uh, and there you can see how the tail cone kind of hooks in. So there's 18 inches that overlap the work table. And with that heavy toolbox behind it, we just ratchet strap it in, and it's not going anywhere. Now, this table just happens to be 33 inches tall, and you need at least 31 inches because the forward uh, pieces of metal for the tail cone will only be about 2 inches off the ground. Now, in that configuration, you can't actually fit. Uh, what I had to do, and I'm in there, standing in there right now, but I'm standing on two pieces of wood, or maybe actually three pieces of wood. They're each about four inches thick. So I'm basically standing on a one-foot pedestal. And even then, the eyesight for me, for the work area that I'm trying to get to, is still above my head. So, I mean, it's it's still not easy. It's in a, it's in a good location, but it is not easy. And now, just because, so this is a pretty good angle, I think you would agree, it's, you know, very nice. I didn't think that was good enough. I said, you know what, I want to capture this from the inside. And so, <laughs> here we go. Here's the first place I, I attached it. 
And then it fell on my head. Here's the second place I attached it. It's aimed directly where you're supposed to work, but you can't see shit. And there it fell on my head again. So at that point, I just put it on the counter and... Basically what you're seeing is a direct crotch shot of me working on it, but you can't see anything anyway because I didn't bring a light with me. Genius that I am. Uh, so the, the procedure is pretty simple. Uh, the, the kit comes with all the pieces that you need. All you need to do is simply deburr. Uh, you do dimple uh, a couple of the, uh, the, the, the side brackets that you use for the stiffener slash uh, bulkhead. <clears throat> Prime them, of course. Uh, you do countersink some of the holes. So you, you're not going to be dimpling and having multiple layers of dimpled metal. You're actually going to be countersinking that will be sitting on top of a dimple. I know it seems kind of strange, but imagine uh, imagine you dimple you know, a piece of skin and the dimple's out, but then you countersink to cover that, right? It's not to match it, it's actually to cover it. And so that's what you're kind of doing here. Now, it, it, now, because of the angle that I was in, I wasn't able to get... There were two... Uh, no, I'm sorry. There was one or two of the rivets that I just... I simply was not able to get a bucking bar to. Uh, I tried all my bucking bars. I just could not get one there. We tried for about two minutes. One, I can't see what I'm doing at that angle. And uh, it's a very tight squeeze. So, I uh, drilled it out to a number four and used a pop rivet. A picture of which you can see here. I mean, so it's all nice and secured. It's just, you know, it's not exactly what Vance had in mind. But it's still, you know, it's a solid, solid thing. So, once we got done, which uh, should be here in just a second, uh, I get on out, and then we take down... Oh, that was not fun. So now it's all done. Now we just have to put the... Uh, there I am kind of cleaning a lot of the dust off. The fires are really bad. The air was really crap. And so, yeah, that's it for the service bulletin. Not really that hard, but it for me, it really did take two people, so. Anyway, now I'm going to bask in my own glory there and swap some stories and with my friend Ted. And uh, we'll see you soon.